Hey guys and welcome to Petroped. Now then, a question I get asked an awful lot about the two modified minis behind me is do the modifications you've done to your car affect your manufacturer's warranty? Well, I have answered this question a number of times on the channel before, but just a couple of weeks ago, something happened and I thought I'd messed up really badly and I was going to find out the hard way. Now, if you've been following my channel for any length of time, you'll know that my car modification journey started about 18 months ago now with my JCW Roadster here. And one of the very first things I stated in one of those modification videos was that I'd always wanted to try modifying a car, but I waited until this car was out of manufacturer's warranty. So I had, if you like, free reign to do what I liked on the car. And this car's had a range of modifications from doing simple things like upgrading the wheels, putting it on coilovers, but then under the bonnet, there's a fair amount of mechanical modifications. This car's running a stage two tune. It's got a uprated clutch. It's got a quaif limited slip diff. I've got a 100 cell Sport Akrapovic Cat. There's plenty of things going on, but I didn't worry about any of those things because this car was out of warranty and if the car broke, then it's basically up to me to fix it. However, this, this car's only a year old, so it still has two years of warranty. So when I started my modification journey, I was a little bit more concerned about the scope of mods I could do, how far I could push it until you started to get problems with manufacturer's warranty. And that's what I thought I would talk about in this video. But before we do that, I have a slight modification stroke customization to do thanks to my awesome friends at SMPS 2012. So I think we pull Charlie Clubman out from underneath the barn and we head over there where I've got a little bit better light and I will tell you more about what we're going to do. And then we'll go for a drive and I'll talk about, well, I really did think I was in big trouble, but maybe it didn't quite work out as badly as I thought it would be. Yes. Now then, thanks to my very kind friends, Sam and Gio at SMPS 2012, we do have a little modification to add to Charlie Clubman. It's in this box. Now, if you watch any of my COVID-19 vlogs where I was locked down, clearly we're in a kind of second lockdown. So the guys thought, let's, let's do it again. Let's do some more mods. So they've sent me something very cool in here. Um, and it's a modification I have actually thought about doing before. Um, and I thought you guys might like to see it. The other thing that I think is very cool is if you are watching this in the first two hours, then make sure you comment because these little gear shift paddles I'm about to fit on the car, I'm actually going to give a set of these away. And you need to tune into my Midweek 180 every Wednesday because I give giveaways. Anyone who basically comments on the Friday night video in the first two hours gets a giveaway. So what we're going to be doing is fitting these little aluminium paddle shifters to the car but it's just started to rain so come on jump inside we'll stay dry Ugh, definitely one of those instances where i wish i'd started making this film about an hour ago when it was lovely and sunny but sadly it's not now then i didn't think this warranted a whole video of its own but SMPS 2012 do some lovely little trim bits for your car i've already put the little black a piano trim on the steering wheel. I think that sets that off a treat. But I've also quite, always quite fancied the gear shifters just being a little bit more, I don't know, a bit more elaborate. If you think about something like a Alfa Romeo, Giulia or Stelvio Quadrifoglio, have these great big um, aluminium gear shifters, the same on Aston Martin, they look so cool. So um, these little stick-ons, now you can get these, by the way, that, um, uh, the, the are a steering wheel off job. These are literally just uh, stick-ons. They um, attach to the existing paddles 
with some uh, stick-on high high um, adhesive tape and I think they look really smart. Now I do have, uh, Sam sent me two different colours, uh, I've got black ones, I have to open one of these, and I've got red ones, um, but I just have a feeling that um, I think the black ones might just get lost a little bit in the car, I'm not so sure that black is my preferred colour of choice, I quite like the red I think it just it will just set off the car and I've got the red accent. So what I'm going to do is if you've commented in the first two hours of the video, I will be giving these away. So the first uh, uh, two hours worth of comments, I will draw this out in my midweek 180 next week and I will then send these off to you. Now these will fit any F series mini with the exception of the GP3 because the GP3 has 3D printed aluminium shifters. So if you've got a GP3, sadly you can't have these, but you've got cool shifters anyway. So any F series mini, uh, they do them in different colours. Clearly we've got black, we've got red, they also do them in blue and in an alloy silver. They are made of um, aluminium and they are nice and weighty as well. So, okay, not this, I don't think this is even going to tax my DIY skills. Alcoholic white, no sucking on the alcoholic white. Just to, oh man, that smells good. Just to clean the paddle to make sure it's absolutely spotless. And actually the amount of dirt that's come off that is unbelievable. Slightly. Now the little pads I've noticed are actually slightly different shapes. So you just need to make sure that you get the right pad for the right shifter. That's that one, which is excellent. So I'm going to peel the backing off of that. Nice in there. So yeah, I definitely think the red for this car is the best choice because I've got red stitching on the steering wheel. I've got so many red accents on the outside of the car. I just think it will work really well. The black is nice and subtle though. If you've got a um, you know a much more subtle cabin or less of an outlandish personality, maybe you just go for the black. Now the other thing that we're going to do, uh, which is very cool. So thank you, Sam. Thank you, Gio. Is uh, only one of you can win the uh, prize draw, but what you can do is make the most of a 20% discount. Um, so uh, I'll put the link below, but basically you've got a discount code PADDLEPED20. See what we did there? So if you use the discount code PADDLEPED20, you get 20% off a set of paddles for your very own Mini. Um, and I think, uh, I think these are gonna look absolutely banging. Take them on there. Oh man, that's very cool. Oh man, that looks very cool. Oh, yes. That one goes in here. Oh man, they look cool. I love the fact that they kind of match the, the red stitching on the steering wheel and even the red outline on the clocks. And then when you're in sport mode, there's a nice red outline goes around there. I think they look absolutely wicked. Now then, I reckon we go for a drive and I tell you all about the slight challenges I had, but make sure you use discount code PADDLEPED20 to get 20% off these very cool paddle shift extensions from SMPS 2012. I'll put all the links below, but let's go on, take a drive, and we'll talk more about the potential nightmare that I very nearly had. Well, first thing to do, sport mode. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. I, this car should just be able to be permanently in sport mode. So let me tell you about my recent happenings, although maybe for people who are new to the channel, a quick rundown on the modifications I've done to this car. First thing I did was, uh, with my friends at Lowen, I put uh, OZ Racing wheels and Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tyres on the car. Uh, I then went to Motec and the guys at Motec put a Remus race exhaust but OPF filter back. And then the final thing I've done is with the guys at Evolve and Eventuri, I've had an Eventuri forced air carbon fiber intake fitted, which opens up the bonnet scoop and makes it into a real air intake. So nothing major and mechanical. Um, and I've done all of those things quite carefully 
um, and just wanted to make sure I didn't, you know, mess anything up. And then, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I didn't put this on the channel or film it because uh, at the time I didn't really want to, um, I basically was coming back uh, home one evening and I had a warning pop up on the dashboard and the car went into limp mode. Um, it basically said that there was some kind of drivetrain issue, it put the car in limp mode and I was able to carry on driving but uh, basically everything was deadened off and the throttle was deadened off, the performance was, was really, really uh, poor. So I called Mini Assist, uh, Mini Assist came out and the guy basically took one look at the car and said it's in limp mode, uh, it needs to go back to the dealer. So we put it on the back of a flatbed and took it back to my dealer which is Mini Worthing. At this point I am now starting to have a major flap on because although all of the mods I've done have been done on the assumption I haven't messed up my warranty, the fact my car went into limp mode was a bit of a concern. Um, and I must say the guys at Mini Worthing were amazing um, and they called me literally within about 24 hours of the car being there they diagnosed the problem as a turbo wastegate actuator failure and I'm thinking oh my goodness me here we go this isn't good because the turbo wastegate well it's part of the turbo the turbo is connected to the new air intake I put on the car they're going to take one look at that and invalidate my warranty and the simple answer is they didn't um, so the wastegate actuator was replaced under warranty uh, and that was it no problems at all now I need to add a massive caveat to what we're about to talk about is that I am by no means an expert and every manufacturer is going to be different and I'd argue maybe even every dealer is going to be different but I have asked around a little bit before I did the work on the car and also since I've done the work on the car and I think the consensus seems to be if you are changing something mechanically um, then you need to start to be worried about doing uh, damage to your warranty or voiding your warranty. Um, if I talk about the exhaust first of all, I actually talked to the guys at Mini when I was with them recently and they kind of basically said look, as long as you don't touch the OPF filter or anything in front of it, they're kind of relaxed because the problem with modern cars is the OPF filter, so many of the car systems are connected to it um, if you remove it or do any work to it or do change it in any way that can change quite a lot of the car systems and they don't like that very much at all. So if you were going to rip out the exhaust and put a completely new, um, if you like, manifold back exhaust then your warranty probably would be a worthless piece of paper. Um, in terms of um, engine modifications things like doing uh, tune stage to tune like I've done on my other car or changing any of the internals and the mechanicals I think that's when you need to seriously think about the fact that you're not going to have a warranty now some people do it and they have no problems with worrying about that and they basically say look if, if basically if I have an engine failure then that's just my bad uh, and I'm gonna have to deal with that uh, but on the whole I think that as long as you don't change the mechanics of the car and if I think about the exhaust all that exhaust is doing is OPF back it's just improving airflow the filter that I've got um, and the um, Eventuri intake it's all about actually making the turbo work more efficiently and making the car work better um, and wheels and tires I, I, I'd argue if a, if, a, if a manufacturer started having a sad on because you changed the wheels and tires as long as they were within the same kind of uh, dimensions and sizes and so on, which, which mine are, then again, I, I think you would be, you would be very unlucky. Um, now then, I'm just gonna pop to the manual box and try out these paddles just very briefly. I'll just come for a little bit of a mooch around. So. mini paddles, the plastic ones, have like a little rib down the side and you can feel that on the, on the end of your fingers. You don't feel that with these things, it's actually flat. It is a horrible, disgusting, weathery day today, I must say. It's really not very nice out there at all. Um, but uh, the joy about this car and the fact it's got the all four-wheel four drive is actually it loves these types of conditions. 
I am absolutely in love with this car. I love everything about it. The exhaust has made such a difference to the overall sound of the car, both the startup but inside the car. It just sounds brilliant, but it's not, it's just not in your face and barky and shouty and poppy and bangy, and I really, really like that. But I have to say, the thing that's really blown me away is the intake. The Venturi intake has changed the character of this car so much. It's made it so much more responsive. The, the kind of, it's sharp on the throttle of the throttle responses on another level. And I know they're a lot of money. Uh, and a lot of people, when I did the video about it, said, yeah, but they're a lot of money. Can you justify the performance benefit? And I must say, it's really a very, very impressive modification. Now then, last thing to cover is, am I gonna do anything else with the car in terms of modifications? My big worry now is, any other things I would do to this car are now gonna be in the scope of what we've just been talking about not doing, and that is physically changing something like, do. I'd love to map the engine and get a bit more power, not that it really needs it, but it would be interesting to put a stage two on, on it. Um, but I'm not gonna do that. I've still got two years of warranty, um, and I'm certainly not gonna do that for the next year, maybe um, I, I'd be a bit more relaxed after a year. The other thing, by the way, just to mention, um, with all of the modifications, two things. Number one, be back into normal uh, drive. Number one, you must tell your insurance company uh, that you've, whatever you've done on the car, because they really will get a sad on. Uh, and I've heard stories, again, it depends on your insurance company, but I've heard insurance companies basically voiding insurance because of a set of wheels that have been changed or because you're running a different manufacturer's tires. So you do really need to keep in close contact with your insurance company. And yes, sometimes it will change the premium. Uh, on the Roadster, um, the modifications I did on the Roadster changed my premium by about 50 pounds a year. Um, interestingly, so far, it hasn't made any difference to the Clubman, but that very much depends on who your insurer is. Uh, but then the other thing you do probably need to have a think about is if you have financed your car, then you don't own the car until you've paid off the finance. So if you start to make huge amounts of modifications on your car and your finance company find out, they're going to have a major sense of humour failure. So um, all of the things I've done to the Clubman are all reversible and I have all of the parts at home to put it back how it was. I've got the old wheels, I've got the old exhaust, I've got the old intake box. So literally within a few hours, I could have the car exactly how it was. So if I wanted to hand the car back at the end of a finance agreement, I can do that. As it happens, um, two years ahead is a long time. My gut feel at the moment says that I'm likely to keep this car beyond the end of my finance agreement. So it has a balloon payment at the end of the finance agreement at the end of three years, I am likely just to pay that off and keep the car. Because I love the car so much, and then at that point, then I can really go to town on it and give it some proper modifications. Please, there's a kind of legal caveat to this. I am by no means an expert. Um, don't say, oh, I saw petrol ped said this, therefore it's the truth. I just happen to be telling you my experiences with my car, my manufacturer, and my dealer. Um, and I had, um, basically a warranty claim on something that was associated with a modification that I've done. Um, maybe I'm lucky. But anyway guys, I'm going to head back because there's a Grand Prix to watch and I need to go and find out if Lewis Hamilton's going to become a seven-time world champion. I think he probably is to be fair. But I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have done so, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petrol Bed for plenty of content to come. Don't forget, if you want to um, get these fantastic paddle shifters from SMBS 2012, just use the discount code PADDLEPED20 for a 20% discount. Um, and if you've commented in the first two hours, make sure you tune into my midweek 180 on Wednesday at 6pm to see if you have been lucky 